Jim, uh, welcome to the program. Let's talk about this. Uh, in a former life, believe it or not, before TV, I actually traded chemical commodities. Many of those were chemical fertilizers. So I'm urea phosphates, triple superphosphates, diammonium nitrate. So I am very aware of what is happening in that market. The price are out of control. Is this all about fertilizer costs or is it fertilizer plus other stuff? That's a great question. And it's really fertilizer plus other stuff. But you've highlighted the number one issue for crop farmers. Uh, fertilizer prices are off the charts. Uh, nitrogen, which is the single biggest fertilizer input for corn production, has tripled in price since a year ago. Uh, and I'm going to say that again. It has tripled in price because you were talking earlier yep. about inflation. This is much more than inflation. And I think from a lot of agricultural producers' perspective, it's really about the supply chain issues, right? So it's, it's not just this general inflation that's taken place. It's this huge disruption with respect to the supply chain. And the most severe aspect of it right now is fertilizer. The follow-up to that is what's taken place with respect to pesticides. Um, those prices are up sharply as well. And in both cases, there's a supply issue with respect to whether or not farmers are able to get what they want and what they need to produce a crop in the 2022 crop season. It's all about natural gas, and that's why we've highlighted stocks like CF Industries and Mosaic, some of these stocks, you know, the fertilizer makers in America. But, Jim, this is going to be a next year story, is it not? Because I didn't grow up on a farm like you did, but I know that crops don't grow overnight. So if I'm a farmer and I'm buying chemical fertilizer now, I'm going to pass through that price next year. Well, farmers in the short run are price takers, right? So it's going to be determined by how many bushels of corn and how many bushels of soybeans are produced, as opposed to what the actual cost of production are. You're right from a longer run perspective. If these costs remain elevated, you would expect to see commodity prices react to the cost of production. But in the shorter run in 2022, it's largely going to be about whether or not farmers are able to obtain the supplies that they need to put a crop in the ground in the spring of 22, uh, excuse me, 2022. And right now, I think the expectation is we will be able to get those supplies, although it's unclear. And this is going to be a debate that yeah. takes place all winter long with respect to availability, transportation snafus, uh, you name it. Every, every single issue that's facing yep. the rest of the economy is being exacerbated in the agricultural sector. Bingo. And, and I talked to a wine store owner uh, lot yesterday. Don't judge me, uh, Jim. I know it's not <laughs> crops, but it does come from grapes. And he was moaning and groaning about his shipping container problem. And I would imagine that this, this supply chain stuff we've talked about in this network and shown also impacts farmers in Indiana and Wisconsin and Nebraska trying to, A, get their stuff to market and, B, the prices they're paying if they can get a rail car or a container. Yeah, the issue right now probably is more on the container side with respect to imports. Uh, a significant portion of crop inputs, namely some of the pesticides are, and fertilizer, are imported. And that has really caused the issue here, I think, with respect to what's taking place with respect to prices. And I guess the other thing to think about is this is a worldwide issue. This isn't just facing American farmers. It's also facing farmers in South America, Europe, and elsewhere in the world. So these fertilizer prices are elevated in the U.S. They're elevated elsewhere. Pesticide prices are elevated in the U.S. They're elevated elsewhere. So this is more of a worldwide phenomena, but it really is about this supply chain disruption yeah. and the inability to move products around the world. Um, and, and really a byproduct of the fact that we've moved to this model of distributing production across the world and then bring it into the in, to the locations where we need it in a timely basis. And all of a sudden, that's been disrupted. And boy, has it just created a yep. tremendous amount of problems.